Good afternoon, once again. Uh, thank you uh, all for keeping up with the pace and uh, for, uh, uh, for spe special uh, words of thanks go to uh, the organizers for allowing me this inroad into the program to present to you a, a project that is ongoing uh, and that uh, the uh, World Maritime University is involved in, which is very much on the uh, application uh, of the uh, legal uh, considerations that we've been discussing in relation to, to security uh, and applying them to in the operational scene. So uh, I won't be very long, just uh, maybe a couple of minutes to uh, present to you the, uh, uh, the project uh, as it stands today. Uh, uh, I'm referring basically to PROMERC, which is the uh, uh, protection measures for merchant ships and uh, I should start by saying that it's an EU seventh framework program uh, uh, research project. Um, the aim of the project is to uh, prevent uh, attacks basically to merchant shipping okay and we do that by studying the uh, uh, countermeasures that uh, mariners can implement to repel, respond to attacks uh, by pirates and non-pirates, all sorts of maritime violence. And you will see that uh, for a legal audience like yourselves, uh, there is a lot of law that has been taken into consideration. Um, these are the project aims. Uh, the objectives, uh, the specific objectives of the of Promark have been to generate a list basically of non-military countermeasures. This is very important because uh, following the uh, developments uh, in the Horn of Africa, uh, you've heard of all the naval uh, efforts. Well, the um, policymakers have also looked at uh, alternatives uh, for uh, in terms of, of, of civilian uh, approaches to, to the problem. And shipmasters are often uh, abandoned to, to their fate with, uh, with these uh, threat carriers, the pirates. Uh, the European Union was therefore interested to uh, have a compilation, have a, uh, an assessment of what mariners can actually do uh, using technology but also using common sense to uh, defend themselves. And so that, that, that has been basically at, at the base of the research that was undertaken by uh, the uh, 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 research institutions that are involved in this project. Uh, the countermeasures were then um, uh, uh, considered uh, against a uh, uh, a matrix which we call PISL and this, wa this is uh, uh, political, ethical, economic, societal, legal, hooray, environmental framework. So we've actually considered uh, the uh, <coughs> rationale, the pros and cons for using the various countermeasures. I'll show you just some uh, graphical representations of uh, countermeasures. Um, so, um, things like obviously private armed guards, uh, that, that's one countermeasure that has been studied as part of this project. Uh, but things, uh, uh, th there are more sim simple things that, uh, uh, that, uh, that you know, uh, mariners use for, for, for these situations. Uh, interesting, inter interestingly also, uh, the development of an automated route optimization tool and an onboard decision aid to uh, choose uh, the best countermeasures and uh, um, if for, to, to support the mariner in their response to these situations. Countermeasures, um, uh, we've defined them uh, and, and I must say that this has been qu quite uh, groundbreaking because there's very little on what uh, in, in terms of the science, in terms of the literature, in terms of the academic, perhaps, perspectives on 
what, uh, uh, what mariners can do and, uh, what, and the pros and cons for, doing, uh, uh, for, for implementing these various countermeasures. Um, so the, uh, this is all part of a layered defense. Layered defense means that uh, you try to avoid the, uh, the attack in the first place. Uh, you t then try to deter the attack. Uh, you delay it. Uh, and then obviously you have to respond to the crisis when it occurs. So it, it, uh, it's layered defense and it's also, uh, we, we use the term circles, uh, circles that, uh, circles of defense. And they may be overlapping. So uh, one example, to avoid encounters basically, route planning is very important. Uh, vigilance, uh, this is uh, obviously uh, uh, lots of common sense to any mariner to keep, to keep a watch basically. This is one of the countermeasures, uh, believe it or not. Okay, another one, uh, to uh, using sound, uh, sound projectors basically to warn uh, on, on, on uh, um, incoming uh, threat carriers. Um, that's, an, that's, that's one countermeasure uh, as well. And uh, fencing and stuff like that, which can uh, avoid or uh, delay the, um, the uh, inroads of the pirates into the vessel. Okay, then we uh, basically uh, had to uh, study the pros and cons, as I said, uh, as against these factors, uh, the piezel factors. And uh, these factors had to be studied in relation to different laws, uh, to different uh, 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 types of also uh, uh, disciplines. As you see, the, 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 the disciplines are listed. And there's a focus on EU society's perception and ethics as well, uh, as understood in EU society, because this is an EU framework project. And uh, obviously, the EU is interested in that. So uh, examples of uh, factors that were analyzed uh, in terms, for instance, of the politics of the various countermeasures, um, whether uh, the, you know, the issue of failed states um, uh, and, and how failed state uh, considerations can affect the use of different countermeasures. For instance, a ship that approaches uh, Somali waters is going to uh, probably have uh, 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 a greater likelihood of using different countermeasures because there's no uh, civil force or uh, defense arrangement in, in Somalia, being it a failed state, so to speak. Okay, then we, uh, we also looked at the economics, of course, of these countermeasures, which are costly for the ship, for the shipping industry. Uh, uh, insurance obviously is, is, is important because insurance can uh, uh, rise or, or drop uh, if, if uh, preventive uh, measures are in place. Um, you have the ethics as well. Uh, we've been looking at the human rights, uh, both of the seafarers to have a, 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 a threat-free environment and also somehow to the pirates. Uh, the pirates also have uh, basic human rights. Uh, we've had the case also of France going to the to court for that. Um, uh, as I, I mentioned, the societal elements as well. Um, okay. The legal aspects of courts, law, uh, the, the, what, what the laws allow uh, in terms of carrying arms, uh, uh, the transit states, the flag states, the uh, port states, um, and uh, not only in terms of arms, of course, um, the environmental elements, of course, are, are concerned because uh, some of the countermeasures may have a detrimental effect on the environment. If you're using uh, um, um, ink, to, uh, throwing ink at, uh, at, at, at uh, uh, assailants, well, that has a, uh, may have re repercussions in terms of marpole. Interestingly, so uh, these factors were uh, uh, analyzed or, or basically collated using uh, both research uh, in the library and also stakeholder involvement. And uh, we've drawn on uh, lots of support from the industry 
uh, where we have ship, major ship owners actually part of, uh, of the, uh, of the uh, consortium. Uh, so, um, we uh, I, I then move on to the concept behind PISL. PISL was actually uh, uh, sort of uh, mandated uh, by the European Union and it's a matrix again of analysis. Uh, but uh, something good about um, uh, the, uh, this matrix is, is that we've recognized that it can vary also from one company to another. Uh, some companies may have different policies regarding different countermeasures. So that's part of the final product. The, dis the decision um, A tool is actually variable and it can be modulated according to different ship uh, requirements and policies. Okay, uh, now uh, in parallel to Promark, there's another project uh, uh, and, and uh, iPatch. And, and by the way, my colleague from the German Ministry of Research and Education has uh, uh, listed those two projects. So I'm not, we're not involved as such at WMU with iPatch. But just to show you the uh, interesting collaboration uh, that is um, uh, encouraged by the European Commission, they've asked us uh, at Promerc to actually meet with iPatch, uh, the iPatch people, and to share the knowledge. And they're really competitive uh, or, or, or competing uh, projects, more or less on the same, uh, same stuff. Okay, so we've we, we actually met with them just a few weeks ago uh, at a workshop. Uh, iPatch is very, very similar to, uh, to Promerc. Uh, I don't want to uh, 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 make a lot of publicity for them, of course, so I'll be very brief, <laughs> okay? So it's all about uh, detec detection and also aiding the decision of the mariner, uh, the, the, the shipmaster, okay? Uh, data fusion uh, and de threat detection and decision support. Um, the achievements, I think, of uh, Promerc, uh, we, 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 uh, we have a database now uh, that is uh, filled with these countermeasures. Uh, uh, and against each of the countermeasures, there's a study in terms of PISL, the, ma the matrix, as I mentioned, uh, the pros and cons. And this has been uh, a research and also validated by the industry stakeholders, okay, at the various workshops. Um, this is quite ground, groundbreaking, as I said, very novel. Um, and uh, I would say lastly uh, that uh, the project uh, started in, Feb uh, in March 2014 and it will be uh, concluded in uh, February 2016. And uh, that was my uh, brief uh, on, on Promark. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Mm -hmm.